been waiting to find You could have been happier Given the time if he'd make up his mind You'd give yourself to anybody who would cross that line And it was never a question He was crowing for repair You'd give him love and affection But you couldn't keep him there Get over regrets well, You were sleeping with the angels He was under the bed and the more skin that you shed The more that the air in your throat would linger when you call him a friend And it was never a question he was crowing for repair Give him love and affection You couldn't keep him there Staring at a cold land Reading fault lines A shell of a man And you waiting for a word from above Ever did come and it was never a question you were crowing for repair you give him love and affection you couldn't keep him there and it was never a question you were crowing Thank you. Hi, I'm Monica Mansfield, and you're watching Mostly Rock and Roll. It is a tremendous pleasure to have Glenn Phillips tonight. Glenn, thank you so much for interviewing with us and talking Fine with right. us before your show. Glenn, you're playing tonight at Tupelo Music Hall mm -hmm. in um, New Hampshire, and you've been traveling quite a bit on your solo um, tour right now. You're doing a February swing through the New England states, and where else are you going? All over the country. Um, yeah, I started in California up the West Coast, out to Denver, Minneapolis, down through the Midwest, Memphis, then that was yesterday, then here and down the East. Great. So, all over. Well, I know your family is very important to you, and mm -hmm. you have three beautiful girls. Um, what are your girls' names? Uh, Sophia, Zola, and Freya. Oh, those are beautiful. Now, what are the mm -hmm. origin of their names? Uh, well, it all depends. None of them were family names mm -hmm. or anything. Uh, I just kind of picked them up mm -hmm. here and there. <laughs> That's great. That's great. We liked strong but feminine. Awesome. So, yeah. Glenn, you began making music at a very young age, um, and you were an in, in, with the incredible band Toad the Wet Sprocket at a very young age. Um, what for you was that leap stone from just you know having this be that you're playing music in your bedroom somewhere to all of a sudden you've got natu national stature with uh, an incredible band? Um. It was mostly a matter of just a lot of luck. I mean, we were playing around town. I was more into theater, and I'd had a high school theater teacher who uh, had described himself as being non-competitive and loved acting, but didn't knew he didn't have that uh, kind of ego drive to be an actor professionally, and taught high school and loved it. And I thought that was what I was going to do. Um, and I switched to music at some point for study just because I was doing so much of it. But, um, but basically, I thought I'd be a high school teacher. Really? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we did a local album, and somebody sent it to a friend of a friend, and somebody at ASCAP started dubbing off copies in his mm -hmm. office and sending them to record companies. So we'd essentially never sent out a demo, and all of a sudden, we had all these companies coming to our shows. and. Um, and so we got, we signed with Sony because they said they'd let us put out the albums the way they were, and uh, you know, so That's I was 18 incredible. and I was on tour. <laughs> so it was really, I mean, uh, 
it was a very strange path just because it mm -hmm. wasn't really what I expected and uh, not even what I was planning for. I was, you know, I, I went on tour instead of going to the college I was going to go to. So. Wow. Do you, um, if you could have scripted that yourself, would you have had it just at that time in your life or would you have rather have had that hit you when you were 28 instead of 18? I don't even know if I would rather have, I mean, it, you get what you get and what you don't get always seems slightly shinier. I was 18, so were you. And I was that Birkenstock he cropped to. And you were the backflip, dull high cheek climbing, earth mama, beautiful evergreen girl. And I never thought that I could be getting my grand you beside me. And there's something I'm blind to, but you still see. Shouldn't be better, I know. Shouldn't be easier. Oh, oh, oh. Should stop waiting for the other boot to fall. I wanna be the toy in your cereal box. I wanna be Carter, your piece of talks. I wanna get almost too familiar. But still notice the way that you walk And if you said that you were going away I'd run on the tarmac And I would lay down in front of the plane Just to get you to stay This couldn't be better, I know It shouldn't be easier oh, oh, oh. Should you stop waiting? Got everything I'd ever wanted here Everything and then this constant fear I'm sure I'm gonna lose it all Just waiting for the other boot to fall If you thought I could be replaced I wouldn't just stop with an ear I would cut off my whole face Just to make my point clear That it couldn't be better, I know it shouldn't be easier oh, oh, oh. I should just stop waiting for the other boot to fall Thank you. Your music coming with the band, for instance, is extremely harmony laden. And I'm curious to know, when you're writing harmonies um, and directing them when you're playing with other people, um, is this a very natural process for you or sometimes do you have to work them out? Do you just like have them flow out of your head um, when you hear harmonies or do you work on those? Um, it really depends. I mean with Toad I would write really specifically for three voices just because I knew I could have counter melodies in mm -hmm. the chorus so that was just kind of in my head as, um, as the way to write and the, I mean it's been a big difference solo just because there's no one else to sing live. And I was wondering um, if you missed that um, because it was such a part of, you know, where you were. Yeah, I'm used time. to. It. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of bands coming up though. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a thing with Garrison Starr mm -hmm. and Nielsen Hubbard, and we're gonna have a band project, and we're all really excited about having it be a lot of vocals. And, and she sings vocals, uh, backup vocals on um, Mr. Lemon's mm -hmm. CD too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so and also I have a band with. Sean and Sarah from Nickel Creek, awesome. uh, and a guy named Luke Bola, who's an amazing fiddler and singer, guitarist, kind of everything. And once again, that's that's lots and lots of vocals. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm looking forward to um, writing more in that mode again. 
That's terrific. Um, but yeah, it's just, it hasn't really been an option because I want to be able to sing stuff live. Well, I've been angry My history I send words and never thought that I could say you were sad and sweet Like a will call song And I'll be back up on my feet Before too long You could say you wanted me I said it first Words rang hollow and Emptiness became the first. I could drink those words, they would make me strong. And I'll be back up on my feet before too long. Yeah, I'll be back up on my feet before too long. For too long If you met me now You never would have stuck around You never would have stuck around So I would lay me down By the salty sea let the water pour the sand over my body To wash me clean Like a river stone And I'll be back up on my feet Before you know it And I'll be back up on my feet for too long Back up on my feet Back up on my feet For too long Thank you. Such a gift you have for um, lyrics and well all the other aspects of vocals and guitar but um it just seems like there's such an honesty with your writing and do you find that that has really um changed as you have reached different levels of self-discovery or do you find that that you also are really good at writing a story that doesn't necessarily have to talk about you mm -hmm. but it's it changes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's totally navel gazing, and sometimes <laughs> it's really narrative and kind of third party. I mean, it has to resonate. I'm not really good at writing. Um, like, I feel really guilty for not having written a bunch of anti Bush songs. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but I, I have tried to write a lot of them, and they all sucked. <laughs> it's just a matter of like, I, I think when I'm good as a writer, I'm more universal and it's not so much mm -hmm. situational. It's more about the feelings around something mm -hmm. than the uh, subject and the material itself. It's more about the person inside the experience. And when I've written well, I think about topical issues. It's been when it's about what somebody's feeling in the middle of that issue mm -hmm. as an individual as opposed to a description. You know, like my, my least favorite John Lennon stuff is the really late, like stuff that reads like a pamphlet. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't want to hear pamphlets. I can I can read them, and mm -hmm. you know th that's fine for me. Um, and the most effective uh, political songs for me are ones you know are just subject songs. I don't know why I got on politics, but. I guess in general, I just like songs that are immersive, regardless mm -hmm. of what they're about. If they're about love, if they're about family, if they're about anything, I mm -hmm. want to be the feel what the person in the middle of it is feeling, and not be so lodged into the um, the plot lines.
If I've been sleeping, wouldn't you just wake me? Senseless dreaming, but you were always waiting. And I've come slowly, surely overtakes me. Am I among the Falling apart, should I believe you could be thinking that about me? Is this your faith? Is this your trust? Have you just given up? All of our friends are retreating, thinking of escaping. Oh, hurry up, they're leaving. You were always waiting. Is it falling apart? Should I this your fit? Is this your trust? Have you just given up? Have you just given up? And we have all been here before. I'm sure you wanted more. I'm sure I could have given. But whatever your intention was, we made it this far because I'm drowning here, not waving, still you're only waiting. Is it falling apart? Should I believe you could be thinking that about me? Is this your faith? Is this your trust? Have you just given up on me? Have you just given up? Have you just given up on me? Have you just given up? What do you like to do in your free time that's not music? Well, I know being with your family is really so, so important to you. Do you cook? Do you... Uh, cook, you, read, yeah. hike, mm -hmm. ultimate frisbee. Um, I saw midwifery is one of your interests. What's, what oh, would you... Oh, yeah, well, my, my wife, is she's actually at a conference this weekend, a midwifery conference. Really? Um, so, yeah, she's um, she catches babies. And, nice. Uh, so, yeah, as far as hobbies, I need to develop a few. Uh, <laughs> I, I haven't had enough free time, and I've spent most of my free time over the last many years kind of worrying. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> oh. I'm, trying to <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm trying to find new hobbies. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I don't know what they are. It's odd. I mean, picking up things, like I've been talking, I, I need to learn how to knit uh, because I've been trying to figure out of things to do on tour that are relaxing and engrossing mm -hmm. and that can you can put away and pick yeah. out again yeah. at any given yeah. time because yeah. almost anything I've wanted to do I get home and I start looking at classes and this and that and there's no time because mm -hmm. I'm always leaving again in two weeks it's like I don't want to pay all this money for a course and mm -hmm. then skip out you have so many CDs that you've been involved with over the years. Do you find when each one comes out that you really enjoy the process of being in the studio? Um, and also, do you find that you can easily go back and listen to them um, as after going through all that hours that go into mm -hmm. it? Do you kind of want to separate yourself from them, or is it an enjoyable experience to listen later? Um, I usually have a few weeks right after it's mixed where I'm loving it, and mm -hmm. then I get... I, then I start poking holes mm -hmm. in it again, and the r most of the recent records I've made in kind of some a state of panic of some kind or another. Yeah. So I would look forward to doing uh, 
I'd like to make a record where I was kind of relaxed and I didn't, I mean, a lot of what we've been talking about of getting me home and doing more, you know, kind of making more records, mm -hmm. but touring a lot less. She looked just like a train wreck that could have been avoided in a third world country by a long stretch of farmland where the waters had run high from the topsoil down the river so that next year there would be no crops. She was as desperate as a salesman at a company that's folding, but they haven't told the staff yet. They're bankrupt and back ordered, and they're funneling their pensions to the CEO's back pocket. So in one week, they'll have nothing. I miss you, girl. I hope you're fine. Good luck, love. Oh, goodbye, oh, goodbye. She's a girl from Central Casting who's played the sweet young orphan or a hooker with a heart of gold. But she got her sad card pulled and turns tricks down on Kulinga. Cool Tells herself it's research for the next the greatest role. I miss you, girl. I hope you're fine. Good luck, love. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Calls you up just to hear you say she's fine and she's gone no way. And you know there's only one more time to hear about her again. Well, it's life and forming art and forming life again, like every stupid kid. Thinks they're the first in pain, first to rip themselves apart, and first to try and live without a heart. I miss you, girl. I hope you're fine. And good luck, love. Oh, goodbye. Want to see your face. Hear your lies. Good luck, girl. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Is the best way for people to follow you uh, where you're going to be and the, the list of, you know, all of your music uh, be on your website or your MySpace mm -hmm. page. So that would be glennphillips.com yep. yep. and then your MySpace page can be linked through there and mm -hmm. people can track you down and find out how to reach you, which is great. Um, have you found that the internet has been a really good thing? Have you really enjoyed the MySpace revolution? Um, I have very mixed feelings about MySpace. Mm -hmm. There's all these ways of being connected now that, that can take so much time out and like independent musicians end up becoming, you know, such experts in, uh, you know, in individual promotion techniques, but uh, we spend less time playing music because of it. Mm -hmm. Glenn, I so appreciate your being here. It is really wonderful for you to take the time with us and um, we just hope the best for everything for you. And again, your music has just done so much for so many people and we wish you the best and continue to make more of the same. And uh, thank you. have a great time with your family too. So thank you very much. You're very welcome.
I can't believe you bend your words like your yellow spoon. Not quite safe here when every judgment seems to smack of doom. Are you okay? No, I'm just fine. You take Nancy for me, Laura, it's fine. Legal precedent that set us straight, but no one's brought a suit. And I'm assuming that if they did, the point would still be moved. I did you can't, I'm just fine. You take Nancy for me, Lord, and it's fine. No, I changed my mind. And I take Nancy for you, Lord, and it's fine. And still, we walk without quite seeing things. And I'll admit there's not that much to see. And I will follow through and expect that you will follow soon. I can't believe you. you bend your words like your yellow spoons. I'm not quite safe here when every judgment seems to smack up doom. Are you okay? No, I'm just fine. You take Nancy for me, Lord, and it's fine. No, I've changed my mind. I take Nancy for you, Lord, it is fine. Lord, it is fine. Allison's a veteran. Emmy Lou's almost perfect.